Three, two, one. Welcome back. This is Abukta. This is Murps. We're going to be talking about the rotation uh, that's going to happen and really the meta for uh, United and Stormwind because we know already what will happen afterwards. The meta that we know is gone and in its place starting on August 3rd, uh, the arena will inclu include cards from the following sets. United and Stormwind, duh. Uh, Forged in the Barrens, the Willing Caverns mini set, although that's really just Forged in the Barrens, like it, they, they just added more to this set. Uh, but Madness at the Dark Moon Fair, along with the Dark Moon Races mini set. Uh, and then Witchwood, Saviors of Oldham, Rastakhan's Rumble, and Core. That's what's going to be in. Yup. What that means is that the following sets are going out. Ashes of Outlands, out for the first time since it first came in more than a year ago. Skullamance Academy, out for the first time since it came in a year ago. GVG and Kabolds and Catacombs. So, we're going to try not to, not like spoil, but we're going to not talk uh, much about what the actual United and Stormwind cards are doing to this meta. And we're more going to set everything up. So that when we start talking about United and Stormwind, you see what kind of what kind of meta these cards are coming into. And it's just kind of spoilers. United and Stormwind is not going to super change this meta that we're coming into. This meta is going to be, you're going to feel the meta more defined by what is not there than what is there. And what is not there are Ashes of Outlands and Skullamance Academy. We have been in a meta for a year when it comes to Skullman's Academy and over a year for Ashes of Outlands that we don't even know Arena without some of these cards. And Ashes of Outlands has, I'm going to do neutrals first. They have the Aug Merchants, all the Dormant cards, including uh, Vile Fiend, Frozen Shadow Weaver, Overconfident Orc, Burrowing Scorpion, Rusted, Shavera, Scrapyard. I, I just hit the highlights. There's so many more cards that get play, but these are like game-changing cards. They're all neutral. They're all in every single game, and they're all game-changing in the way that you approach the game. Like, Overconfident Orc is 6 health of taunt on a neutral card for a 3-drop. That doesn't exist. Like, once Overconfident Orc is out of the game, you will never see that. And that creates a totally different feel of how viable aggro is. Um, Rusted deals 5 damage on 5 super efficiently. That's going to be gone. Now it'll take way more mana to deal 5 damage from a neutral position. Shavera, that ultimate comeback card, right? Like where you deal 6 damage of perfect damage, assuming your opponent doesn't have more than 6 health on the board, and you plop a 6-3 on the board for only 6 mana. Just available to everybody. Like, that's just not in the game anymore. And of course, Scrapyard, the potential endgame um, win condition. Like, Scrapyard, not the best card, but super impactful when it does come out. Uh, not to mention the Aug Merchants, which are extremely efficient pings that the non-ping classes will really miss. There are three Aug Merchants. Three of them. They're all out of the rotation. So you're going to see so much fewer pings than you did before. Um, and Skullamance Academy takes out Broomstick, which kind of works with Shavera in that they are the two most ridiculous comeback cards. That, uh, that exist uh, in, in the game right now, in neutral. And Tutor, which is the kind of sub-comeback card that's part of this group, it takes away Penflinger, which can be used uh, just very flexibly for removal, but also all the card generation cards. We're talking Sneaky, Fishy, Smug Senior. We're talking Wand Maker, Steward, Mage Scribe. So whether it's just actually card generation or just adding card advantage by duplicating itself, that's all Skullamance Academy. When Ashes of Outlands came, the board was never safe anymore. It was just flipping back and forth. It was very clear. Like Ashes of Outlands came and the meta flipped just like that. Skullamance Academy came and then the meta became endless cards. Like you just would never run out of cards because of Skullamance Academy. So these two probably had the largest impact on the meta of any set besides like Descent of Dragons, probably. Um, so them being gone is, it's a huge deal. These two sets um, had so much initiative and so much potential to flip the board, whether it was actually initiative 
which we saw a lot of uh, in both sets, really. Um, or it was some sort of generation or some sort of like, you know, with Biofiend, it was removal that your opponent couldn't really interact with, right? It came out later, but you, you had it starting from when you played it. Um, and then Skolomance um, had, you know, Broomstick and also Shavera were two removals that you just couldn't really play around. You could think about them for a second and then say, OK, well, what's the best way to play around it? I don't know, like maybe if you have an option with uh, Shavera, you can do that. A lot of times you don't. You can think about Roomstick for a second, but you just had to expect your stuff to be removed because there were so many ways for it to be removed. And it was much more worth it for you to think, once I am removed, what's my next play? It, it got to that point. And a lot of these things are just gone now. Um, we had never seen just sort of an abundance of good neutral initiative slash removal slash generation of removal, like Steward mm -hmm. of Scrolls or Onyx Mage Scribe. Um, and then, of course, we're missing like the... Uh, like, the yeah, like one maker. Like, yeah. You, you, we don't think of it as like, oh, a huge generation, but like that's one of the bases it's of generation, generation for every class. Yep. A uh, huge amount of generation there. So, yeah, um, th these are probably two of the most impactful, I mean, like, uh, are arena sets ever, mm -hmm. and you're going to be missing both of them, and somewhat of a little bit of a spoiler, um, United and Stormwind is pretty tame. Yeah. It's just a pretty tame set. So you look at something like Skullman's Academy and Ashes of Outland, and you're just like, okay, well, then uh, the new set is going to dominate, right? Well, it's a 2021 set, right? Like, mm -hmm. we're not looking at, uh, like, Witchwood. if you compare it with some of the sets that are coming back, <laughs> like Witchwood, right? Um, you will not confuse them. I, I will tell you that right now. But if you're looking for some sort of continuation or evolution from Ashes or from Skull and Mance Academy... You're not going to get that. Yeah, and you um, haven't. It, it's just that. a very tame set. Like, even Dark Moon and Barons wasn't, well, Barons after they got rid of the watch post, wasn't up to the level of game changingness that Ashes of Outlands and Skull of Mass Academy was for the arena. Um, they kind of just continued the power levels and, like, added to that ability. Like, you think, like, Corrupted cards, like, oh, yeah, it allows for swings, right? That's all they do, sure. But, like, how many Corrupted cards are you actually playing? Like, think back to your games, right? Like, each player plays less than one Corrupted card a game. That's, that's not a huge impact on the game. Now, think about how many uh, Shaveras, Mage Scribe, Broomsticks, and, you know, Tutors are, you're, you're playing. Like, a ridiculous amount. Um, Og Merchants. So, we're, we're talking, like, two very heavy sets uh, in terms of impact leaving. Um, the other neutral cards you have to watch out for leaving in, in GVG and Cabalds and Catacombs, which are old sets and don't really do much to the meta, is Dragon Slayer, just to watch out for. I like to no longer watch out for. Fungomancer, which is always like in its own category of other cards just don't do this in the neutral set. Um, even though like these days it's a pretty fair like premium card. You're not like flipping out when someone plays a fungal. You're like, okay, he fungal. Um, and the twin cards of Proto Drake and Violet Worm. These are the two eight mana giant things that you can't quite remove, and both of them are gone. A and they're not quite getting replaced. So, um, just everything's going to be different. Everything's going to be different. Uh, on, on the class card side, I'm just going to run through quickly um, some of the top cards that you would normally kind of play around, just so you have it in the back of your mind. Maybe you don't have to play around with it anymore, play around it anymore. Um, but the first thing to note is that Ashes of Outlands and Skull Man's Academy are also the first two sets that were Demon Hunter sets. Remember that during this era, Demon Hunters got more cards than anyone else because they were a new class. And... Um, all this is gone. So cards that you've never seen Demon Hunters live without are no longer in the arena. Coilfang is gone. Skull of Gul'dan is gone. Immolation Aura. Um, uh, sorry. V v v v Cycle of Hatred. Voidhound. Like, these are not core Demon Hunter cards. Even though if you're a pure arena player or, you know, if you're just kind of a Demon Hunter player, you wouldn't really think of it that way because Demon Hunter has never existed without it. 
but they're no longer going to be there. So you still have some super powerful cards like uh, the Inquisitor, for example, uh, at the end for Demon Hunter, but you've lost a lot of power. Um, so uh, so that's, that's going to be an interesting thing. Now, Demon Hunters kind of dominate Arena anyway if you just give them all your cards because of the hero power and these big cards. So not having these big cards will probably just auto-balance Demon Hunters a bit. So that's a good thing. Uh, but other cards you want to look out for, uh, any dual class card is gone. Um, and, and some of them are pretty meta impactful, uh, such as uh, Wand Thief, for example, uh, which I'm sure everybody will be glad to no longer see. Um, but uh, Librem of Justice and Paladin is gone. That was your big flip the board card for Paladin, and it follows the entire theme where the flip the board cards are leaving. Uh, Psychic Split is gone, uh, Skeletal Dragon, Cursed Vagrid, Torrent. Uh, Torrent is not a gr amazing card. I only list it here because what's also uh, leaving from uh, Kabul's is Crushing Wall. Uh, sorry, uh, is Crushing Hand. So you get two hard, effectively hard removals from Shaman leaving. Uh, so Hex is, is a little lonely now. Uh, Gnarg is gone, finally. Feels like we've had Gnarg forever because we had. Firebrand is gone, Combustion. Uh, for positioning purposes, Blessing of Authority, any of the studies are gone, including Draconic Studies. So no more needing Blizzard to like lower the offering rate of Draconic Studies specifically. The card's just not going to be in the game anymore. Tidal Wave, Troublemaker, Light Bomb, uh, Crackle and Recycle for like weird things that um, these like Druids shouldn't be able to recycle. They can't anymore. Uh, Crackle has weird face damage, doesn't exist anymore. Crushing walls for Hunter with positioning and just with kind of ridiculous removal potential. Um, Psychic Scream is gone. Those are those are a list of cards that are gone. Just a bunch of uh, a bunch of good cards. It's uh, it's pretty big and uh, pretty impactful. Yep, uh, it's a lot of stuff. Do you want to say anything else? I just want to talk about the uh, new stuff. Yeah, now. let's talk about uh, the new stuff that's uh, that's coming back. I am going to go through uh, all the neutrals that are coming back that are impactful, uh, the new ones. And I just uh, sent you my, my, my list in case uh, oh, you want okay. to see what's coming along. I just realized that would be helpful <laughs> if you had the list of things I'm like rattling out. So for the neutrals that are coming in, after all these impactful neutrals are coming out, remember, Witchwood, Rastakhan, and Odom that are coming back in, Witchwood and Rastakhan, along with Boomsday, which is not coming back, they were part of that one year where Blizzard dropped the power level back down to normal before they like, you know, said screw it and then power creeped everything again. So they are like particularly weak sets as far as the modern era goes. Um, and then Oldham was part of the, the return to power creep. So you're going to see a lot better cards in Oldham than Witchwood and Rastakhan. Uh, and Witchwood has uh, the... Uh, kind of echo effect cards so phantom militia is coming back just something to know that uh, puts out a whole bunch of taunts sometimes although there are bigger and better taunts nowadays you'll name royal guard for that uh that's the eight damage removal eight three rush um that's sometimes a three eight rush or something uh this is, again it's, uh, we never thought it was a great card and it's even worse card now than it was but it is a neutral hard removal essentially Mossy Horror to destroy all two attack or below minions. Something to potentially consider. Worgen Abomination for dealing AoE damage once you get to the, the high end. Uh, those are all coming back. As well as from Rastakhan, Dragon Maul Scorcher. You may have lost all the Aug Merchant pings, but you're bringing back the big ping one where Dragon Maul Scorcher pings everything on the board and is uh, just kind of a pretty good curve card on top of that. Uh, five mana, three, six. Deal one, da um, deal one damage to everything on the board. Amani Warbear is your kind of replacement for uh, Rusty Raider. Like, do you remember Amani Warbear? I think it's like a 5-7, right? Yeah, yeah it's, it's a 5-7. It's a 5-7 rush. Like, and it's 7 mana. Compared to Rusty, that 5 mana, doing basically the same thing. It's, it's kind of crazy, the power creep that's happened there. Uh, Mashag Enforcer is that... 214 card with taunt that is like eight mana and has a divine shield on top of it just really annoying to get through but not a good card uh just just something to be aware of that it, it exists in the game now as a neutral 
And uh, like, like we said, this is not not good cards. Good good neutral cards are coming from Witchwood and Rostikon. Oldham brings back some some heavy hitters. Uh, Bone Wraith is that two five uh, four drop that has Reborn and Taunt. So that's that's a pretty big like it's it's no um, orc at three mana six health, but this is five plus one health, which is even better than six health at four. So your big taunt thing has been moved to four rather than uh, rather than being at three. Uh, Pickrock also deals five damage, but this thing's like is Pickrock nine mana. Uh, no, Pickrock is eight. Eight mana? mana. Okay, so yeah, okay, so Pickrock is eight mana. It's a five six that deals five damage. Um, neutral, and it could go face. So unlike Rusty, here now you have a, a neutral card that deals five face damage potentially. Raft Golem, the huge one, that is the seven five reborn that generates uh, a one one taunt each time it, uh, at the end of each turn, each of your turns. So that is just a, a big bulky, hard to remove kind of three hit to remove uh, minion. That, uh, that is, I think we, we rated a B plus. It's, uh, it's right below uh, the, the A tier. Um, and there's Volpera Scoundrel on the Discover side, which is uh, with the, so it's one thing that happened in the last kind of, uh, in the last update is epics are being offered as much as anything else. So some of these epic cards that you may not have seen a lot, even when these cards are back in its, its heyday, you may see more often now, and Volpera, with its Discover effect, that includes new cards being able to be discovered, is, uh, is a good candidate. That's your 3-mana 2-3 three discover, uh, discover a card, or Discover a spell, sorry, and uh, with, a, with another extra option to get a random card if all three of your options suck. Like, that's a really good card. I got nothing to add. No, nothing. Okay, um, but but you see it from the list that I just presented, right? They're not world beaters coming in here. These are these are your normal neutral cards. That you know, wrap golem aside, you know, maybe bone wraith aside, you're pretty happy to deal with. And they're not too annoying. They're not too weird. They don't warp the shape of the game. You're playing normal old school Hearthstone now. Um. As far as class cards go, I'm just going to run down on these. Um, <laughs> uh, Abomination, uh, sorry, uh, Sound the Bells is coming from Witchwood. That's the plus one, plus two buff for two mana that you can echo. Um, so now Paladins have kind of an endless buff that's potentially going to be there, even though it no longer has Blessing of Authority. Uh, Silver Sword is coming back. That's going to be big. There's going to be a card that comes in uh, in this new set in United and Storm that lets you discover a weapon. And Silver Sword is a weapon. Uh, Squashling is back. All these Echo cards that are pretty good, uh, which allows you to heal massively as Priest and put out a board. Uh, Cheap Shot, Warpath. These are all Echo cards. Like, going through Witchwood, all the good cards were Echo cards. And I also ran into Bonfire Elemental, which was just hilarious. Because here's a class card that's a 5 mana 5-5 five, five and lets you draw a card. Only if you... It has a condition. You have to play an Elemental the turn before. Whereas... Later on, like a couple years from then, they're going to print Big Ol' Whelp, which is a neutral card that just draws you a card for nothing, and is also has a tag on it, Dragons. So just this, the power creep just really hit me when I saw that card, I remembered what Bonfire Elemental was, and how good of a card Bonfire Elemental used to be. Um, in Rastakhan, you're going to get back Blast Wave, which is uh, that five mana deal two damage to everything and overkill, uh, add a random spell to your hand or uh, um, everything that you uh, overkill. That was always an interesting card. Mass Hysteria is back. So priests, they may have lost Psychic Scream, but they have, they have other things. Uh, Demon Bolt is, uh, is in, along with Imp Balming from Oldham. So your Warlocks are going to be very hard removal heavy. And uh, Dragon Roar. As, as some people in chat have been uh, pointing out, Dragon Roar is back. That's the two mana at two random dragons uh, for Warrior. And remember, dragons are really good now, especially the core set dragons. Ysera's not going anywhere. Ysera's still in the game. It's part of the core set. Uh, so that's going to be an interesting card. Um, this was, like, between Rastakhan and Witchwood with Warpath and Dragon Roar, those were the two anchors of the old, like, arena control warrior. And it'll be interesting to see if that archetype kind of makes a comeback because these two cards are both back. Uh, 
Oldham comes in with a few more like big powerful cards uh, being a newer set. Overflow and Druid, massive draw plus heal. Desert Spear in uh, Hunter, just very good tempo, very flexible and good tempo early on. Flame Ward and Mage, if you remember that, just the fear of getting three damage to all your minions done really slowed down uh, a lot of games. Uh, Arcane Flak Mage similarly punished you for like just amassing a board. Uh, Puzzle Boxes Bag as a bomb. Subdue for Paladin. So you, you may have, the Paladins may have lost Librum for the comeback mechanisms, but it now has Subdue for basically hard removing stuff that has no business being able to hard remove. Um, kind of a shift in the ridiculous things Paladins are able to do. Uh, Pharaoh's Blessing, another semi-replacement to Blessing of Authority. Uh, Plague of Death, another big priest bomb. Evil Totem. The evil stuff is usually in uh, Rise of Shadow, so they're not coming back, like the, the normal lackey stuff. But there's a couple of lackey cards that are in old them, and Evil Totem is probably the most annoying one of them. Uh, Earthquake for a big shaman uh, board clear. Plague of Flames, Warlock board clears. And uh, Restless Mummy. For, for Warrior, just kind of as an insanely good overpower card. Yep. Yeah. Look, uh, just compare what we lost to what is being replaced. You got a lot of fair stuff, right? Um, you got to pay more for the initiative. You have a lot less initiative. Uh, and a lot of these units, you know, even the most powerful ones, they just, you know, they kind of exist. They give you uh, a bit more stats than you should get. But by now, we're used to that and much, much more. So this is fine, right? Even like the most powerful cars that we're losing, it's like, oh, we get mass hysteria back? Well, hysteria has been better <laughs> for longer. Um, it, it just has been, right? Yeah. Uh, we get back Silver Sword. It's like, come on. Like uh, Snowball mechanics for Paladin have evolved to such a degree that it's not like Silver Sword is bad. It's just like, okay, we've... You know, we've evolved past Silver Sword. Like, we point. see a Silver Sword now, and we're like, okay, Paladin's doing Paladin things. We're not yeah. like, oh yeah. my god, game-ending, big card. Like, just look at Plague of Death versus Psychic Scream. That's not like, not that Psychic Scream's a new card, but Psychic Scream is, uh, is basically Plague of Death, but at two mana lower. Pretty much. So, this is where we're at. Um, we got a lot of just acceptable somewhat fair and if not fair uh comparable or lower power levels to what we're used to uh all, all that stuff is coming back and we are missing some of the most powerful and really the, the most defining cards uh in arena and if you just started playing arena like about a year ago those are the only cards you've like known uh essentially so everything is changing everything is going to be very very different and that's probably for the best. Yeah, um, it'll be it'll be interesting. And if you're looking at the meta things, like normally I put out four points as to what the meta is going to feel like. Well, the meta is going to feel like whatever the hell Skullamans and Ashes of Outlands was not. So you're going to be in a bigger bind for cards. Card advantage is going to be more of a thing, like actual card advantage, because people are going to run out of cards. You already ran out of cards more after Barons than you did before Barons, because Barons was not a card draw heavy set. And with Skolomance gone, that was the endless card set. So you're, you're, you're definitely going to be in need of cards if you're going to play the game a bit longer. Now, some of the new sets that came in, especially uh, Oldham and Rastakhan, do have a lot of good like card draw cards, but they're like old school card draw cards. They're like pay mana draw cards, not like here have some free cards that cost no mana. So you're going to have to make some trade offs between your tempo and your card draw. Uh, but those cards are going to be playable. Um, cards like Sprint just got better because when you don't have endless cards, Sprint is actually a card that you may consider putting into your deck. And you may actually spend like seven mana to draw the you know crap ton of cards, or like six mana to draw a crap ton of cards. Um, uh, the other Ashes of Outlands was all about flipping the board, right? Like we expect the board to be flipped on you two, three times these days. It used to be even higher when Ashes of Outlands first came out, but now it's about two, three times. Well, you can expect that to drop to like one, one and a half times, which which feels almost like the 0 0.5 to 1 times of classic Hearthstone. So 
we're, we're really moving a lot in that other direction. And what happens if you can't flip the board and if you're going to run out of cards at a certain point? Well, decks can just win now by making sure they don't get that making sure they're taunting up a lot they're defending a lot they're healing a lot and they have more cards that outlast you uh because remember big taunts aren't leaving uh some big taunts are leaving but they're being replaced by a lot of other big taunts and you'll see united and stormwind stormwind right taunts make sense this is some pretty big taunts coming in stormwind as well uh so you're gonna have a lot of like on the ground battles uh, but you can really just outsize your opponent again, which was kind of something that was not possible to do uh, in the last few uh, metas. And on the flip side, aggro is super back. You may have to find creative ways to get through some taunts, either with hard removals or silences, um, because there will be taunts. But if you don't have the board flipped on you very frequently, just kind of going all in on building your board and either hitting face or building your board and doing the paladin thing and like you know kind of making sure you keep having a board while you trade and buff your board they're very viable tactics again um and there's some united and stormwind cards that that's go on and support that so these are kind of archetypes that have been if not left in the dust at least underpowered for a year if not more than a year and they're all going to make a comeback in this new rotation, this new meta. So when we say things are going to be like, look a little different, that's what we mean. Like stuff that you haven't thought, like tempo is going to be so huge. Because remember, the old problem of curve stone and tempo is that tempo snowballs and the person that's winning is going to win eventually, right? Well, it's going to be more like that now. It's not going to be as like that as back in the day, but it's going to be way more like that than you've had in the last year, year and a half. Okay. Cool. That's it. Yeah. Um, all right. That is uh, the rotation and the meta update. Do uh, you have any uh, shout outs to, to give before we end this uh, podcast? Sure. Uh, let's give a shout out to everyone watching this right now on Twitch. Thank you guys. All right. Uh, shout out to all of our mods um, who are doing a great job reeling in these. Uh, it, it, just unruly these, ruffians exactly of twitch chat. mob uh of millions of people in twitch chat right now but thank you to everyone who is watching uh thank you to our mods we appreciate it let's just keep it going all right um see you guys on the next episode when we actually talk about united and stormwind cards until Bye. then this is abrikta this is murps by